It is episode 92 of Working Class on DeerCast. Uh, Kurt Geyer speaking. Eric Common. And in studio, Mr. Mark Jury's in here. What's up, guys? How, How are you? I'm I'm fired up to be <laughs> your co-host in this episode. In studio. Yeah. I'm in like, studio. I might turn the tables again this year and start asking you guys questions. Let's do there it. There you go. And joining us via the dark web, Mr. Stan Potts. Thank you for doing this, man. It's an honor to have you. Oh, I, I love this. I love it. I, I'm glad to be here. Love talking, telling old stories with Mark. We got a lot of <laughs> Well, Stan, I want to start by saying that you are one of those icons for me from my childhood. Uh, when I'm watching hunting videos, you're like the reactions, the hunting, the personality, the character is part of the reason that kept me motivated as a kid. Uh, to keep going hunting, which I think now to, it's hard to do as a kid to like keep excited, you know, and you're one of those like names that sticks out to me is like, oh, you got to watch this guy's hunts, that type of thing. So I just wanted to give you that credit from my perspective growing up until now. Um, you're you're a living legend in my eyes. So, well, I appreciate all the kind words. That's great. I mean, I've been blessed to be able to do what I do to make a living, but been blessed to live in Illinois and in the Midwest and for a whitetail hunter there is no there is no better place on earth than the Midwest wouldn't mm -hmm. you agree Mark oh 100% I mean <laughs> you know you don't realize it when you're a child but sometime in your adult life when you start meeting people from the northeast the southeast oh, and yeah. different parts of the country you go I got lucky where I was born, and it's exactly what you're talking about, Stan. Like, you don't really realize it because it's just normal to you yeah. until you start meeting people from around the country. and From different you, places. You hear how they covet it and want to come here, and yeah. we were just lucky to, to be to be born here, Stan. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, you, absolutely. It is. It's the the epicenter of, of big whitetail bucks, and over the years, you know, I've met and talked with and seminared a lot of people in the east and northeast and south and all over that don't have the opportunities that we have as far as big white-tailed deer go and you know they would ask me well how do you think that you would do if you had to hunt where we hunt and of course i always told them i said well I'd come in there and I'd shoot monsters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they love that. <laughs> I would start laughing and I would tell them, I'd say, you know, you can't kill them if they're not there. That's right. We use the analogy, you know, like people that hunt in some of the non Midwest states, there's kind of like a, a narrative of the internet where it's like a complaint. I'm like, well, you know, I look at it as like, if I want to kill a big elk, I have to leave Illinois to kill a big elk. Right. I'm not going to kill one here. I can yeah. hope and hope and hope and dream and dream and dream. But until I go where elk live, I'm not going <laughs> to kill an elk, you know? So it's kind of the same thing when it comes to whitetails and all that. And, and some people don't realize that they're just hoping to get lucky maybe, but uh, we're, we're lucky to grow up in the Midwest, man. We are for you, sure. You summed it up right there. I mean, it's exactly right. Like if you don't like your situation, leave move Change i moved it. i moved to iowa in 1997 i was from southeast missouri yeah. you know and then, then i started traveling through the great state of iowa selling mossy oak and i was looking at every wall and every sporting goods store and i was like i'm moving this where <laughs> i gotta go this yeah. place where i need to be right it didn't take me long <laughs> I, got, sure. I got out of out of missouri well going back you said you know traveling yeah. across iowa how long have you guys known each other mark and stan how long because i love these like uh, nostalgia stories long time well, we've known each other for a long, long time. I mean, we met, we knew of each other before we met, but we met over in Western Illinois at Heartland Lodge. I was managing that place and getting it up and going. And Mark and Terry came in and was filming some stuff. And they was actually working with the owners of, of Heartland Lodge. And that's how we met. But like I said, we, we knew of each other, but we met there what and immediately struck a great friendship. And then, you know, we started, you know, they asked me to do some stuff on on camera with them. Uh, it was a it was a a power calling tape. Mark mm -hmm. had a new call called Power Call, Mad Calls. And I said, sure, I'll do it. I'd never done anything on film. We went out in the woods and knocked it out and 
no time and the rest is history <laughs> that would have been 94 or 95 so uh, if we were doing power calling that was either 94 or 95 staying right in there so 30, so 30 years, years 29 yeah 29 yeah. years so nearly three decades and uh we've had a an, we had an immediate friendship chemistry is weird we've talked about it before but yeah Terry and I fell in love with Stan in about five seconds, and we we're still in love with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's one of the best out there, and we recognize that right away. And the thing that makes Stan so different, he's great at what he does. He's driven, and I want to talk about that a little bit more later, but he's willing to share it. And, and we noticed that right away, just like me saying, hey, would you come and tell us what you know about calling on this new MAD mm -hmm. tape? A absolutely. You know, and mm -hmm. we mic'd him up and he went to call. And, and I mean, he was he made that power calling video because of his knowledge and his willingness to share it. And, yeah. and just like today, I call him. I said, would you do this? Said, yeah, I'd love to. You know, <laughs> Stan's one of the he's one of the originals. And we do that turkey series, the OGs of turkey yeah. hunt. Well, that is the OG of of modern day deer hunting in For my sure. opinion right here stan pod so we're so blessed to call you a friend buddy oh yeah well, we've been very close friends tight buddies well for three decades yes sir yes sir i love it yeah i know and when people start throwing around i want to get into like you said like be like being motivated what it takes to like kill big bucks and be on big bucks and all that stuff but I always feel like the two, when the 200-inch conversation comes around, Stan's name is one of the first ones that gets dropped in that conversation. And because it's like how many it's, – it's a fun thing to talk about. We talk about a lot with our show is like who's the, who's the, the, the goat of whitetails, which there's no answer, but it's fun. That's why it's fun to talk about because everybody has who they consider their goat, their top five. And of course, you know, Mark, you're in a lot of that conversation we have and Stan, you're in that conversation with a lot of people. Um, how many 200 inches have you killed? Cause I feel like it gets thrown out. It's like, well, how many? Yeah. I grow, grows 200s. I got five now. Wow. Come on. <laughs> five. <laughs> five. And, you know, the thing is, is that that is the mark that, that, that's, that, that, that's the mark that everybody shoots for. I mean, it's it's just kind of you know the dream of all got all deer hunters that love to hunt big whitetail bucks. You know, their goal is to shoot a two hundred. Mm -hmm. Well, if they do shoot a two hundred, then their goal becomes to shoot another one and another one. I mean, and and it's a it, it's a great great thing to have to to be able to uh, to hold on to goals like that. But the only problem is and and Mark can tell you this firsthand because he's got properties that he that he manages and stuff and and a 200 inch whitetail um it doesn't matter how many five six seven eight year olds there are out there there's such a small percentage that will ever have 200 inches of antler they'll be monsters they'll be giant bucks but they just don't have a, they just don't have 200 inches of antler growth. It just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very small percentage of big bucks that get to be mature that get to be 200. What do, you, what do you think it is, Dan? One in 100,000, one in 500,000, one in a million? What do, you, what do you think it is if you had to take a guess at that, at the, how rare it is? I, I guess would be one in 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 a hundred or more, one in one in the hundreds of thousands, probably. I, yeah, agreed. I, I would assume. I would say somewhere you know, between one and a hundred thousand, one and a half million. That's how rare they are. Yeah. Well, then the yeah. next question, I think, naturally, Stan. Once you hear like hear that estimated statistic, they'd be like, "Okay, Stan. Obviously, you know what you're doing. Obviously, you're passionate about it. Obviously, you're motivated to find deer like that." But I think. Someone listening would go, if it's that rare, how the heck do you have five of them? <laughs> well, it's because I put myself in the in the in the place and the opportunity where they're at and where I knew some of them were, and I hunted them, mm -hmm. and I I let a lot of other deer go by. If 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 you shoot if you shoot them five or if you shoot them five year olds that are 155, 60, 65 inches. 
you're not going to kill that 200. But in saying that, it's hard for people that, that, that do TV and video and stuff to pass up those big, mature, big, mature five and six year old bucks that aren't 200. And let me, let me say this also for all the guys out there and the gals that, are, that love to hunt that are listening, you know, if you, if you take, let's say a seven and a half year old whitetail, which is a rare animal to get seven and a half, especially in the Midwest. But if you take a, seven and a half year old deer that's 165 inch big giant eight nine ten pointer heavy bases and everything and then you take a seven and a half year old that's a gross 220 and you go out there and you hunt them there's really no difference in the two other than the antler growth mm -hmm. because they're both the hardest animals in North America, especially in the Midwest, in the populated areas, they're the toughest animal to kill on a regular basis with any consistency, period. Period. They yeah. are. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. No, I love that breakdown of that because that's what it is. You know, when you get to that age class, it's like, you know. Me on the outside, observe, our, observe, observing Stan, like, he said, because he went and found them, and it, it's not so much just like once you know where the 200 is, he's, he's going to kill it, chances are, because he's he's as good as there is out there. But you got to find where he might be first, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Stan's really good at that. You know, he's really good at figuring out where to go hunt, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then he's really per persistent when he's there. And like I said, if he's on one, Chances are he's going to kill it. Well, clearly. Okay, let me ask you this question. How many did you know of that you didn't kill? So you you got five. You, you probably knew something of them. How many other 200s or possible 200s did you not run into? I Well, that I knew or that I knew lived in an area and existed where I could hunt several. You know, it'd take me, it'd take me a little bit to sit here and figure them out, but yeah, I mean, several and, you know, but I'm 72 years old, you know, I'm, I'm in good shape. I work out every day. I, I climb, I still climb up and down out of trees. I don't, you know, I don't have a problem, but you know, I've been around a long time and I've been after these type of deer for a long time. So I have known about several that I've never killed. Very nice. That nobody's ever. And that's another great myth. I wish somebody could tell me where they go. Right. Yeah. What happens. Amen. They just. <laughs> they just disappear and you never know where they go. That's right. Nobody finds them. Nobody kills them. They just. They just disappear. But, you know, there's. You know, one other thing I wanted to say, too, is, you know, guys like Mark and myself, and we've been so blessed and a lot of other people to hunt all over North America for, for whitetails, big ones, you know, out West, up in Canada, all over. But these big deer here in the Midwest, they're just something different about them. Maybe it's because this is where we grew up and lived, but there's just something different about them. They live right behind your barn. They, you know, it's just different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a different part of it here in the Midwest, hunting a big six, seven-year-old deer that lives right around you. Or it, it's just, it's it's addicting. It's it's like a drug. <laughs> well, even, if, even if it's not a 200, it's just something about like that home farm where you actually put all that time in all summer, you know, and if you actually take a buck off it, you know, that just means so much more to you. No doubt. Yeah. I, it, it hits home. I think it's something like our roots in the Midwest, like growing up, born and raised here. It's like it's, it's home and there's something about that, like an experience we can get in our backyards a little bit. But you know, I've just started getting more like Western hunting experiences and hunting everything else. And the more of those hunts I do, the more I love whitetails. Like, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I get more passionate when I'm home from like an elk trip. I love elk hunting. It's fun. And I love mule deer hunting. That's fun. But when I get home, I'm like more thankful and like more 
Appreciative. Appreciative of my whitetails. Yeah. I don't know what it... I love all hunting, but something about the whitetails just like... I don't I know. I think it's just because how, that's how we grew up and what we grew it up like doing. Com- well, it like completes me. There's no place like home, right? right? There's no place like home. Not- and it's the holy grail of, of hunting, yeah, you know, is. is the big deer. Yeah. I, I shot a buck. I shot a buck with my bow last year that I called the fat bottom eight. He was six and a half years old. He was an eight, eight pointer. And had several trail cam pictures of him, but he was an absolute beast. Probably 50s. I don't remember what he scored, but he was just a straight big eight 50s. But just, you know, I mean, just a beast of a deer, six and a half, you know, 300 pound on the hoof whitetail. And, you know, that was just, I was just so, I was as pumped up with him as, as anything because I was after him. I hung. I hung the stand right there for him, and I killed him right there. I killed him, at, uh, you know, about eighty yards from where I'd killed a buck called Stairmaster two years earlier that was in the one eighties and was seven and a half that I passed up at four and a half. But that big fat bottom eight, I mean, you know, when I looked up and 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 saw him coming, and he was behind a doe, you know, it's just. Oh. <laughs> i love it man you can't beat it i love how like you know your post shot reaction stan is like well that's what stands out about stan pods the the best thing man (laughs) it is the best like because you know we all have our own everyone kind of has their signature like range of how they react and it's like yours are the most iconic i think and ever that's what makes him well, sad. That's, right. that's hey, you know, and it, that's just me. That's my personality. That's how I am. That's who I am when I'm not deer hunting. Mark will tell you that. Yeah, it is. Well, we just saw it right there. He thought about it and was about ready to react. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Stan, what else gets you excited? Like everyone knows you as a deer hunter, but and, and we don't got to spend too much time on this. But I'm curious. Like you're so into hunting. You're so passionate about hunting. Obviously. Does anything else get you half as excited as like deer hunting does? Um, I play a lot of golf. I love to play golf. It's it's probably not the same as, quite as hunting these big bucks, but it's nice to it's nice to hit one from 175 yards out and stick it in there five feet from the pin <laughs> and go in there and drain. <laughs> okay i was just curious you know because i think hunting gets me excited more than anything else that i can think of in my life you know I, oh, yeah. i'm into other things but not like to this level so i just didn't know you know if it just taps into something kind of a little deeper for you then which i you know you kind of answered yeah it does but i was just curious you know really nothing like 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 hunting these big white tails but you know there's other things that you know i used to fish bass tournaments i used to travel all over over the country and and compete and and the competitive part of me i loved it you know and i was pretty good at it and i did it for a long time and and then uh i quit playing golf i I played golf when i was in my in my 20s and 30s and i quit for 30 plus years i just started back up again five or six years ago and um i love the game you know but and and you know tournament fishing my sons both do it now and tournament fishing is was 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 great but you know as sometime you 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 got to move on it it's tough it's a grind and and so i i went to the golf course and got playing with all my buddies and Mm -hmm. i love that there you know but i i I usually shut it down and when it starts getting close to october and i don't really play until Till I'm done hunting, you know, I sh- I shut it down and 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 hunt whitetails for several months, and then I leave and go to Arizona, and we live in Arizona, in, a, in on a golf course all winter long. We're out there five months, and I'm playing four or five times a week. <laughs> Perfect, love it. I was going to say that a lot of people may not know he goes to Arizona all winter, but yeah. 
that helps keep him in shape. He talked about working out, and that was one of the things I was going to talk about. Stan, one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of really good deer hunter is – uh, how determined they are and how persistent they are yep. he gets up every morning and he does four or five miles on a on a uh you do it on the uh elliptical don't you stan yeah i use the elliptical machine i do every day i do four miles awesome. seven minutes and then i do 300 crunches on my medicine ball and that's what i do every day Plus, he's golfing. He's active. He's seventy-two. He's in better shape than most forty-year-olds. Yeah, know? he's in better shape than me. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I love that you, you said that, Mark, because that's something my old man always said. Is like, you know, he, my dad was a single guy, you know, later, and he's talking about like d- trying to date when he was in his fifties, and he's like, man, you meet some fifty-year-olds and you swear they're like elderly yeah right like they you know and i know guys that are older that like get out of their chair they're like oh my back i'm like you're 55 yeah you know and, but my dad never quit moving i think those guys that get like that that oh, i don't deer hunt like i used to and oh i need to get the compound out they quit doing what whatever time they hung it up and now they just can't do it again right or they think they can't so well, it's like yeah if you want to deer hunt but it it all boils down to the it all boils down to the fact that you get out out of something what you're willing to put in it for sure and as you get older as you get older like i have you know you 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 got it you got to even dedicate yourself more mm-hmm. to st- to stay in the game that's a great and point there's a re- I, i've said this a lot mark you understand there is a reason why Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods were the greatest ever at what they did. That's because they were the first ones to get there and the last ones to leave, period. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. It kind of goes to like hunting for big deer too. It's like the, the time you put in, um, you know, hunt time, of course, you know, but then like, you know, and I, I do want to get into this with you a little bit, Stan. Is like the knowledge of when to apply your your pressure and when to hold off, especially on bigger deer, like you're talking about some of the hardest animals to kill in North America. It's like the time dedicated to actually get that done and to not be you have to be ahead of the deer because if you get lazy and you start, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, then you're always chasing the deer instead of getting in front of it. From my perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure that's had a lot to do with your big buck success over your career is having that mindset. Well, yeah, it has. I mean, you, you, you got it, it, a lot of it is common sense and early season, late season, you can make a big impact on, on a big deer and you can hurt yourself bad during the month of November in the Midwest. Not so much. You get in there between the bedding area and the food source or whatever, when they're on their feet with does, looking for does, whatever, you can get away with a lot more. But you got to understand that early season, late season, you got to be really, really careful. And during the rut, you don't. Yeah. That was one of the things we learned from Stan when Terry and I first started hunting with him. There was a period where myself, Terry Stan, and Steve Stoltz would would rotate filming each other mm-hmm. during the rut, you know? So there was four mm-hmm. of us, and we'd just rotate around so you were with somebody new every day and hang sets. And Stan's technique back then was, and of course, we're doing this during November, he would crash in. He was always, he'd go straight to the heavy sign, big rubs, big scrapes. Like, he wanted to be right in the middle of, of that, that best action right in the action right in the action and that was one of the things we took away and, and learned from him early on he mm-hmm. liked getting right in the middle of, of it getting their face a little bit i think a lot of people are scared to well, do that what, to dive in deep and go right in there you know mm-hmm. like he's saying though it's timing as yep. to when you can do that yeah it's timing it's in the, in the month of november in the month of november they're different not that they're easy because they're not but they're different mm-hmm. they got they got those on their mind and you can get away with more and you can mash in there and i'm i'm, I'm in I, I put myself in those places where i know they're cruising they're cruising from one from point a which which could be the bedding area or the food source to point b 
and in between, you know, and then I've learned over the years exactly how they like to cruise those areas and where they go because they don't walk the same. They don't go through an area the same as all the rest of the deer. A lot of times you just, you learn all that stuff, but you got to get in there. And if you get in there and you got enough time to spend in November in those areas, you're going to get your opportunity. And that, and that's where I'm blessed. And so is Mark and a lot of people because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot. There's the, the vast, vast majority of the hunters, they can't do what we do, meaning they can't go 27 or 24, 7. You know, they can't hunt day after day after day after day because they're working. Mm -hmm. And it became our job, you know. So if, 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 you've, if you've got every day, and you put yourself in the right opportunity, very rarely will you not have the opportunity as something you're looking for. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point. I love that. It is. So that being said, for the guy that guy or gal that you know works, um, you know, forty plus hours a week, if they were like, "All right, Stan, I got vacation and I can't split it up. I got to take a five day window." When would Stan Potts tell them to take their five day window of vacation? If they have to take it a consecutive would, five days. Oh, me personally, I would focus on Veterans Day, which is November the 11th. And then I would, it wouldn't matter to me if it was four or five days before and four or five days after. But I would put November 11th right in the middle of it and then decide, look at the moon and look at, look at the long range forecast. Look at, look at stuff like that. Damn, right in a good point. <laughs> look at deer cast. Finally, yeah. Oh, lost. Him. Pretty darn. All right, you're back. Hey, Stan, you you cut out there for a second, but you were saying you'd look at the weather, you'd look at the moon, and then you cut out. Okay. Well, I would, but I would focus on November 11th. That's Veterans Day, and if I had seven days to hunt, I would, I would. It wouldn't matter to me on putting those days before or after. I'd probably put November 11th right in the middle of that seven day period. And those are the seven days that I would be hunting on either side of November 11th. And if you're in the woods that at that time of year, I mean, you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. I love that. 11th is one of those magical days. I love November 11th. Yeah. That's a big day. Well, no, November 11th has always came up, but never veterans day. You know yeah, I mean, no one's ever, yeah. no one's ever said yeah. Veterans Day. Yeah, yeah, it's all, yeah, it's on Veterans Day, yeah. but That's it's awesome. a magical so, day. Yeah. This is this is a question I asked to uh, John and Clint were on the on episode uh, what was ninety one. I asked them this. Uh, I asked them, you know, we're talking about being aggressive with whitetails, but I also had a fun question that I a day in the season that you've always wanted to kill a deer on. Like their answer was Halloween night. Like neither one of them would kill a deer on Halloween night. Like it'd just be cool to kill one on Halloween night. Sure. Do you have like this is to both Mark and Stan? Do you guys have one of those days? They're like, oh, it'd be cool to, you know, uh, to whoever's birthday or whatever day might be significant. Like, is there a day in the season you've always wanted to kill a buck on? For me, it's well, October thirteenth, my birthday, and I can't kill one to <laughs> save my life. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a tough day. I mean, there's starting to get in the lull. It still can be a little bit warm, and we've just always struggle in and around October thirteenth. <laughs> It'll happen. It, yeah. What about you? Stan? You know, for some reason, for some reason, years ago, November. Well, I know what the reason is, but November the ninth became a, 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 a real target day for me. And that was because I killed, I've killed some just absolute giants on the ninth and the ninth and the 21st. I've, I've, I've killed so many big ones on those two days. You know, those, those, those are the days, but as far as back early in my career, just picking one day or wishing that I could shoot a big one on, on, on a certain day. No, I did. I never did do that. Ninth is a huge day for me too. I've killed three really, really big deer on the ninth. The ni so it's right in that pocket, like Stan was saying, mm -hmm. right around the eleventh. You know, always in the morning too. And all three of them were on a south southeast wind on the oh. ninth. And all three of them, the pressure was up over thirty point one five 
all three of them. So when the ninth Whoa, comes yeah. around, do you, are you just what? hoping for that south southeast wind? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hunt it no matter what. But right. it was, you know, but it's no coincidence. You probably get the excited. The same, you know? Yeah, that recipe adds up. Yeah, yep. that's really interesting. Yeah, that's and Stan, what'd you yeah, say? You, that. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's that. Well, no, what Mark was just saying, he's killed killed those three big ones right right there, and he knows you you. you you picked up on the fact that he knew the conditions, all the conditions. Mm-hmm. And remembers them. Oh, yeah. You know, those are just little, yeah. little things. It's about dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Yeah, that's right. Don't take no. I've always done that. My dad killed his real big one on the 16th. 16, yeah, the six. Well, geez, now I feel bad. 16th or 17th. And that was like our day we always shot for. So it's a couple of days before Illinois firearm season. So we're like, oh, it's our day. So it's the day my dad shot the guy books. So I always like, man, it'd be cool to kill. Like, I want to kill a buck on the same day, but I want it to be my biggest buck. Right. To kind of like match what he did. Just it'd just be kind of a neat thing. But I always like, I'm always for some reason conscious of dates. And so I, I think that question's fun. Just, you know, like, you know, on your birthday, it'd be really cool to kill a buck on your birthday or whatever. So, um, I think it's just a fun question because I think a lot of people think about that stuff. Oh, yeah. I think about it every year. Because it's like little things like superstitions. And, and Stan, I'm curious if you have any. But like when I get in my tree stand, I knock an arrow. I give one arrow so many chances yep. to get it done. I do the same thing. And I pull them off. I kiss the fletching, put it on. I'm like, it's your chance, buddy. And everybody else in the arrow quiver is jealous. And then I'll give that arrow like five <laughs> days. The next day I get in, I'll go to arrow two and swap it. I was like, all right, do me proud. This is your chance. You're up to bat. You're off the bench. Do you, do you play into any superstitions or little things like that in your hunting at all? Well, uh, yeah, sometimes. A lot of times when I get in a tree in the morning, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the third arrow out of my quiver. Counting from the front of the quiver, one, two, three, I take the third arrow out, and that's the one I put in the bow because I've always just kind of thought about that little cliche you hear. You, third time is a charm. Oh, and so hmm. I'll, I'll, I third. Okay, I'm so glad you answered that way because if you're like, no, superstitions are stupid, I would have felt really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. They're real. <laughs> they are real. Do you, do you have any, Mark? Superstition? Yeah, just little stuff. It could be just a little thing for your own personal, like, feel good. What, Terry and I have one that he was the first one that noticed it. Like, if you cut yourself in an area like hanging a stand or just some little mistake if you draw blood you're fixing to kill a giant right there like terry noticed that early <laughs> on and you can't do it intentionally it has to be a mistake <laughs> it has to be a, a thorn catching your arm or a you know cutting yourself with a saw or a knife or now something that you think about it i have one of those i'm telling you t- that that blood drawn we got a stand in Iowa called the Bloody Walnut. Perry cut himself deep, and I mean, he bled all over the stands, the tree, and everything. We haven't killed one there yet, but we're but, fairly certain we're going to. Well, I like that one. That's a good one. I did my first big buck. I was what? 20. I, that happened. Well, hold on. What did Stan say? What is it? Well, it just goes to show you that that was a great question that you asked us because I had, I had the third arrow. Mark's got the drawn blood i mean we all as hunters i guarantee you most all of us have things like that i, just, I bet you 98 percent of, of the that's, people have that have something oh they got something lucky song i'm telling you oh yeah that's, that's the most thing. powerful damn thing in the fall is when you find the lucky song you can't make it come up it just got to come up on its own yep man it's powerful We've had some tremendous lucky songs through the years. And that, see, I love that because I feel better about myself now asking you that I consider two of my childhood icons. <laughs> and still, you know, it's like, all right, I'm, it's not just like I'm being dumb type thing, like a little thing. No, everyone does it. Yeah. It's fun. That's a fun thing to think about when it comes to it's that. It's a fun you know? question to ask. Yeah. I like it. Um, you guys make me feel better about all the dumb stuff I run my brain through during hunting season. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anything else, Dan, besides the arrows? You got anything else? Do you have a song? Do you have anything? Uh, I, nothing comes to mind, but I, I always do that with the, with my arrows. You know, the third is a charm. Third time is a charm. You count to that third arrow and pop it out. Okay. I got another I question for you, Stan. You've, you've hunted whitetails a long time. Obviously, like huge accomplishments. You know, five gross 200 inchers. Is there something 
in the whitetail woods that you haven't done that you want to do? Like, is there a goal you haven't like checked the box on yet? I I haven't killed a I haven't killed a two hundred off the ground. Ooh, and I'd love to do that. Number six off the ground. That's a good one. Mark, do you have anything like that? Is there I'd something like, that you haven't accomplished yet that you're kind of like, man, I really want to check that box? Um, have accomplished it, but I want to do it more. Just introduce more people to hunting. Take more people hunting that maybe wouldn't have a chance to do so. Um, you know, those types of things. Yeah. More on that that picture. is Has it changed because of maybe the deer you've killed and you've set like the personal goals? Is that is that like a... A changing evolution of I, th- I think it's part of just a personal evolution you know yeah. like stands the same way we're so thankful for oh. the opportunities we've had you, mm-hmm. you want to give back you know yeah, as yeah. much as possible and and make sure that you know you're um you're a steward to the game and a steward to the resource in the appropriate way mm-hmm. I, mean, I think that's important terry's the same way like yeah those things are important and when we were younger you know, you're a little bit more self-absorbed, and you want yeah. that big buck and all that type of stuff. And I still do. I still want to go out there and hunt big deer. And but I love seeing other people, yeah, kill giants. You know, Wade killed a monster last year. I love hunting with Perry because every deer is like a world record <laughs> when, yeah. he, when he sees it coming and then shoots it. And that I just love that stuff. Love hunting with Taylor and and Austin's the same way. He has a cardiac arrest every time we see him. <laughs> you know, a turkey coming in or a strut or a, a big deer. So. Um, you know, it's it's that type of stuff I really yeah. enjoy, and I love our catch a dream hunts. You know, I mean, those are those are always the hunts of the year for me. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, I do love that. You guys, I mean, you know this, like both of you guys. You guys do realize how many people you've got like in into hunt. hunting at a level like of like my level of hunting. Of course, like my dad and I hunted together, but like watching you guys as a kid is what kept me motivated. Like kept me. I felt in the game because, like, if I was irritated, we go back to our camp and I'd just watch videos. And that kept me in the game. It kept me excited. It kept it fun for me. So I know you guys know that, but like the extent of people you two have got passionate into hunting and more people into hunting. And then the careers you guys are probably responsible for is probably way greater than you guys oh, yeah. know. I mean, I know you guys probably have an idea. Like, you're not ignorant to the position you're in, but um, I mean, shit. Us, it's a piece of people you guys have influenced. Yeah, like, into hunting. Yeah, the influence they have is so heavy that you're doing more. You know, just besides of you directly taking someone with you hunting, sure, is astronomical. It's huge. So I just, I, I just want to give you guys some credit there. Like, it's insane. Like, you probably couldn't even really wrap words around it to explain it well you're, you're too kind kurt you're doing the same thing with your platform and we i'll let so. i'll let stan speak to that i know he's he's thankful and feels blessed like like we do and we're uh hopefully that's what we are doing oh well i i am i am blessed i'm blessed to share the knowledge that i've accumulated over the years um i realize that 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 the platforms that that the Lord has given us has, has created a lot of great things and people, people want to do what they see us doing. And we've brought a lot of people into the sport. Yeah. I, I, I I definitely, um, I definitely know that. And I'm definitely thankful for that to be in, for, for, for the Lord to put us in, in a position to do that. And yes, we have. And, and that's why, that's why we, we love what we do and, and we will continue to do it as, as long as we possibly can. And we're so appreciative to all the people that, um, that shed a positive light on the sport of hunting. Mm-hmm. Great. No, I love well it. Said. I just had to say that, you know, it's like, it, this is, is a pretty surreal moment for me. I don't get nervous on many podcasts, Rob Keck <laughs> and this one, I'm pretty, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty nervous. And, uh, it's the man, it's the man, you know? So 
I, I feel like I'm not interviewing or conversating as my normal podcast self because I'm nervous. Um, so I'm just being transparent. I mean, it's also real. Like, you know, eight years ago when we started this, do you think we'd ever thought we'd have Mark, dude, Mark Drury sitting here and staying pots calling in? Remember we had Taylor <laughs> on as a podcast, and, and we Taylor's thought we were like, big time in it. Well, Taylor goes, "Hey, my dad listened to the show," and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like that our was first, what seven years ago. Eight our years first ago? year, eight oh, over eight years ago, just yeah. a touch over eight years. It was our first like thirty episodes. It's like, oh yeah, uh, Mark listened to it. I was like, oh. Like, I just got nervous. I'm like, he's going to hate us. Yeah, he hates us for well, sure. I was new to the podcast. Like, even the awareness of podcasts <laughs> were new to me. And she right. was like, I'm going on this podcast. And I'm like, what? Who are these guys? What's going on? So I was curious, you know. And yeah. you guys were great. I was like, this is awesome. I well, really enjoyed it. Good. I remember being like, oh, no. We all kind of say that future day. future we have, <laughs> Mark just called everybody. He's like, avoid these guys. No, and then Chase Rolfs was the one, was the, Chase, Chase Rolfson was the one that said, you got to watch these guys. They're on fire. They're so good at what they do. And the moment Chase said that, that was over for me. I mean, you know, yeah. his word is gold, yes, you know? Right. So yeah. that's when I became a huge fan and we've been friends ever since that's because right. of yeah. Chase's introductions. Chase has right. been the coolest dude to us. He's oh, so yeah. good. He's Same awesome. with us. He's big, awesome. The big shift for us. But now I didn't mean to get all sappy on you guys, but I just had to at least say <laughs> that why I had you guys. Hey, I, I love hearing that stuff, and you guys are doing a great job, and you're taking the torch. They are, big time. You know, in baseball, Stan Musial was one of the greatest players to ever play the game, and they called him Stan the Man. Well, maybe we can get that to stick for Stan Potts in, in deer hunting. He is, <laughs> he he is, is Stan man. the Man. Here comes that man again. That's oh, how they – That will be easy. He was in Boston, and he was new, you know, and he, he went four for four that day with two home runs, and every time he'd come up to the plate, a lot of the fans were going, here comes that man again, here comes that man, and then it was Stan, Stan the, the man. man. Well, here he is, living perfect. Is that where that right saying comes from, Stan the Man? Stan the Man, that's yeah. exactly where it comes from. Didn't Stan the Man that. Musial. Yep. <laughs> and Musial was the man. Well, he's the man, buddy. <laughs> I mean, he had a, I've been a Cub fan my whole life, but I love the guy. He had a people don't realize a lot of people unless they're diehard baseball fans he he had a 340 something average lifetime yes yes and lifetime. His, his average on the road was exactly what it was at home which is rare as well i don't yeah. even know what that means <laughs> his batting average oh okay. you know gotcha. yeah it, stan the man musical is one of the greatest to ever play top five one of players the, of all time uh, one of the, Probably, I'd, you'd have to put him in the top five, one of the greatest ever. Yep. Really? Have you guys ever been to a Major League Baseball game together, you and Stan? No. Is it because uh, he's a Cubs no. fan and you're a Cardinals fan, Mark? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it this year. Let's not bring it up. I'm a Cub. I don't want to I've talk. I've been a Cub fan. My son, Timmy, is a diehard Cardinal fan. I don't know how in the hell that ever happened. <laughs> Mark got did. a hold I of mean, him. He's, adop he's adopted, yeah. Or Mark got a hold of him behind your back and said, hey, listen, <laughs> here's a ticket to a game. <laughs> Be a fan. Yeah, you know, but secretly, most of those Cardinal fans secretly, they were happy for us when we won the world championship. 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah, they were. Is it because it was so long? They hate. They hate <laughs> it was so, it was so, I was. I didn't know if I would ever see it in my lifetime. But well, when, it, when it happened, it happened. I mean, Brenda and I was sitting here watching the game, just her and I watched the whole series. And, yeah, it was a tearful moment. Yeah, that's crazy. I uh, I don't but, uh, follow sports. Had part put, of me feels, feels like I'm missing out. You know, all these Cardinal fans, you know, that our whole life, too, was it was just brutal because we never won a championship. And the Cardinals got 11 of them. I mean, there's only one team in the history of baseball got more. And that's the Yankees. That's right. And they bought them. <laughs> and, the and they bought them. It's tough They out did. Here. And the Cardinals. <laughs> no, I love it. I, I, I like that you guys have big interests, like, you know, stands in the golf, and you guys enjoy baseball as well, but. I don't know. It's cool. There is other things that deer hunting, but the main passion, your lives, everything is structured around deer. But it's uh, I don't know anything about baseball. I just think it's funny to bring it up. From we still to need time. to get you out golfing too. 
But the, <sighs> you notice the thing about Stan. He talked about golf. He was passionate. He talked about baseball. He's passionate. He takes that passion with him in everything in life. Right. Yeah. And I, it's one of the things I was talking about, how determined he is. And he's just, it's one of the things that makes him so great, you know? So yeah. if you're sitting around not seeing deer and you're not hunting and you're a little passive, you're never going to, you're never going to get better until you get that drive. Right. And that, that goes for anything in life. Oh yeah. And some yeah. people just don't have a lot of drive. They don't. Know? They don't. And that's, that's a bummer. It's a bummer. It's not a bad thing. It just. Some people don't have it. Yeah. Some people don't have it. And they're comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, they probably live longer than us. <laughs> <You're not laughs> probably, right. yeah. We're nervous and worried. And well, <laughs> I like I always say, like, my anxiety motivates me. If I didn't have anxiety, I'd probably be one of them people. <laughs> Same. You know, I'd probably just be like, I don't care. I mean, I'm pretty easy going, but uh, I have I live with anxiety. Like, I'm constantly like, oh, I got to... And, and I think that's what... Ke- I don't think I'm motivated. I'm anxious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, uh, but like hunting is like the thing that motivates me and it also makes me anxious. Oh, am I anxious or motivated? Maybe a little of both, but yeah, you need it a little bit, right? It's a little bit of it's healthy, I think. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Keeps, Big time. Keeps you in motion. Um, gonna... Stan, what do you got going on this fall? What 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 is top of mind right now? Is there a certain deer or is there a certain state? What are you looking forward to the most this fall, 23? forward to hunting right here at home and got my two boys and over the last seven years this is the seventh year we've had that big lease over there and uh, i'm looking forward to hunting with them again and the last seven years have been the greatest years i've ever had in my hunting career just because timmy and terry are involved in that lease with us and and um I, i'm i'm looking more forward to that but yeah there's 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 two deer that I'm after. Good. <laughs> Will it be the number I'm, six, two hundred from I'm, the ground? That you you might. I mean, there's two of them, and, and I'm 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 set up for them. And I got six. I got six. I got more than six spots, but I got six spots. I mean, they it, it they are dialed in, and now all I got to do is have a little bit of luck. And get and be in that tree when they come by because they're going to come by them six spots a lot. Everybody's like, man, I'd like to have one of those six, right? <laughs> yeah, I think everybody is, but also it's like they haven't put in the I'll time and the, the time that yeah, used to have put yeah. in. He's to, set up for good reason, yeah, you know. To that point, Stan, those six spots, those six spots. Did, how close were you when you first picked them, or did you tweak any or all of the six after sitting there and, and hunting it? How close were you first time? I, you know, I, I didn't. I knew I knew where I wanted to be. I knew the area, the six areas I wanted to be, but I didn't get I didn't get real antsy and just go in there and throw one up. You know, I I I spent a lot of time out there looking and, and, and analyzing and figuring everything out to where, you know, as well as I do, Mark, when, 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 and, and most of it's bow hunting, but you know, that you got to be pretty much in the right tree, Mm -hmm. not just in the right area, in the right tree Mm -hmm. to get killed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and that comes with you know, and it it'd be cool. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it'd be cool to walk a a hardwood ridge with Stan like October the twenty seventh or twenty eighth, and it ain't gonna happen. But it'd be so cool to go to a new spot and go rainy day, misty, foggy. Go, let's go walk this farm real quick and yeah, and just watch him. You know, right? Just shadow he's, him. He's just shadow him. He'd be like a bird dog out there, you know. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't be talking. He wouldn't be shooting the breeze. He'd just, just be looking, just sniffing around. Yeah, and he'd come pretty close. I'd about bet you, if right. he, he'd be close. I mean, that's as much fun, if not more fun. It is more gratification doing that than 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 when you actually kill him. I mean, that's the culmination of everything. But I mean, yeah. trying to figure them out and trying to do that. And these spots, I got ready. 
I mean, it, it doesn't matter what the wind's doing. I got a spot ready, northeast, south, and west. Sweet. I've got it. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I, I've got a plan in my head that, that you know, I, I've got a spot to go where the percentages, I think, are real high that I can get him killed. And I, I've got a spot to go regardless of what the wind direction is. Yeah, so you, it's just like that. That it's just like that. That two twenty I killed, non typical. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, I had, I was dialed in over in Montgomery County for that deer, and I had a northwest wind that morning. Pat Reed was running a camera for me, and we got in my north wind spot, and just right after first camera light, I felt the wind switch. And start hitting me in the back of the head. And so I knew right then that that wasn't going to work. And I turned and said, let's go. We got to we gotta go. Yeah, we got to go to so-and-so tree. You know, the wind shifted out of the south. We got to go. And I, I was already had my boats lowered down and everything. And he, he said, no, wait, wait, wait. He grabbed me by the shoulder. He said, no, wait, wait. Pull your bow back up. And you know, you're, you know how you are, Mark, when you're focused. And I'm focused, and he's he's telling me I got, and I, I'm looking at him saying, oh, just get your stuff ready. We got to get out of here. And no. He said, we're filming, and, and we're telling the story. And people need to understand this. Put your bow back up, put it on the bow hanger, put an arrow in it, and turn and tell me why and what we're doing. So reluctantly, I did it. And pull it back up, got it all done, got down, jumped in the Kawasaki mule, snuck around, and then walked, slipped down in that tree with a, with a perfect southwest wind. And it was probably 7.30, time we got all set up and everything. And at 9.30, I killed a 220 non-typical. <laughs> I love that, dude. <laughs> I love insane. that story. Well, I love that it's like most people, it's too much effort to get down and move once you're already there. Oh, yeah. Well, I think most people think, okay, yeah, I'll I, screw more up than, than I'm going to do better. Right. I Maybe. I don't know, maybe. And the buck that I was, you know, I had, I had those spots hung for that buck because I knew that buck was there. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that story. I was in Wisconsin. And Greg Miller was hunting on this property because it was a lease I had, and he was hunting there. I let him hunt there. He'd been hunting there for several days. Well, I'm up in Wisconsin hunting on Larry Huffman's place, you know, we're, and, and Pat and I are up there filming and hunting with Larry and everything, and, and Greg calls me on the phone. He said, hey, look, he said, I saw that big non-typical that you're hunting. He said, I saw him cross that saddle in the bean field this morning. And he went right down in there and he had to walk right by your south wind stand down there. He had to, and he's without a doe. He's on the move. And this is November. I hung the phone up, turned to Pat. I said, pack your stuff. We got to go. <laughs> and he goes, what are you talking? I said, we got to go. And I said, Larry, I want to apologize to you. I can't stay for the rest of the time. But this big buck is, is that, I, that I'm hunting is, is on the farm, and he's without a doe today. And I want to leave and get there so I can start hunting first thing in the morning because it won't be but a couple, three days, and he'll probably have another doe. And he's vulnerable right now. So we're leaving. We threw everything in the truck, drove down, killed him the next morning. Mm. <laughs> That is awesome. Making moves. I love that. Well, now we got cell cabs to do that for us, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Greg Miller, Sands Originally Cell Report. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, original, the original cell cam. Shout out to Greg Miller on that one. <laughs> yeah. Another That's a OG. Good story. Another yes. OG. Yes. Well, and in today's world, that that that's that that cell camera would be would be your Greg Miller. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because you would come down in there and walk through there and at daylight without a doe and you know but greg called me and told me and, you know I, I don't kill that buck without my buddy greg telling me that mm -hmm. but i don't kill that buck without knowing that you know he was vulnerable right then 
And if I can get there before he finds the dough, he's going to be cruising around through those draws up and down around. And he was mm -hmm. next morning. He came, we got in there, switched stands, got in there and we were sitting there and about nine 20, I looked across the Creek and I'm looking through a lot of hedge trees and a hedge bottom and it's thick, but there's a big scrape over there just across this little Creek. And I seen a deer on that scrape, but I couldn't see it very good. I was looking through a lot of stuff. And I told Pat, I said, there's, there's a deer over there on that scrape. I think it's a big one, but I don't know. And I threw my binoculars up and I was trying to focus through all those limbs and I was focusing and he was working the scrape. And then he raised his head up and there was one little hole that he, when he raised his head up, his head was right in the middle of that hole and he made a, a right turn with his head. And I seen that big drop kicking off that G2. And I said, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that big known typically is on that scrape. When he gets done, he's coming right through here. Get on him. And Pat being probably the best cameraman I've ever worked with, got on that buck on that scrape through all, all those limbs and it just and he got on that buck and then as soon as he got done he dropped his head and here he come right across that little creek oh mm, of <laughs> i love it dude <laughs> I'm looking at it. I, I love it it gets you so excited after. again don't it uh-huh yeah. Stan, you are the man, but dude. You, know, you are the man. He's the man. Stan, the man. It's just a hunting story is all that is. And that yeah. guy that's sitting there in the studio, guys have got a lot of them. He's the del I mean, it's his delivery. It's a delivery. It's delivery. It's a yeah. delivery. I want you to, like, narrate children's books, man, <laughs> <laughs> for my kids. Like, hunting book. You need to write children's hunting books, Stan. I'd buy all of them. How then... cool would it be if he wrote a book, just white tail tactics, you know, call it, you know, Stan's tactics or whatever, and then had the audio version of it. Oh, oh. the audio book? You really It'd owe that. Epic. You owe that to us now, Stan. I wish you'd start writing. Stan, I know what you need. What? I know what he needs. I dictate it and you know it just it just so happens i've got a writer in the family yeah b i know what he needs yeah you need a podcast stan yeah. we need it like an every other week podcast series that just take back to like all your big buck stories and uh and news stories that's what we need and news stories but we got to start from how captivated would that be <laughs> <laughs> the personality he's got it bucks. I love telling them because it just lets me relive them again over and over again. But that guy sitting there with you, he's got some too. One of the best stories that I've ever heard was the one when he, when you killed that big giant mark and you was you 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 wasn't hardly you wasn't very high in your platform or whatever you was in, but it was a buck you'd been after and you was in that little small area. And it was early season and he came in and the whole story, I mean, you called me up when you killed him. I, I heard that you killed him and I sent you a text and you called me up and told me the story, the whole story right there over the phone. And he, he actually came in behind you, if I remember right. And, and then when he's, when he's, you know, you can hear him coming and then when you look down and see it's him it's just yeah that was the one where the, i think you're talking about danger if i'm not mistaken and that little not that little three-year-old that nice three-year-old came in and ripped the living tar out of a tree just coincidentally it was one of those mornings really high pressure 30.3 october 21st my anniversary mm -hmm. and he ripped the world apart and i i told wade i said if that if he's here He's going to come to that sound. And it wasn't minutes I could see feet walking. And, and all the other deer had already moved, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else had calmed down. Right. It's that time of the morning where you're like, you know, a little bit longer and we're going to go. Yeah. yeah. And then that one door, that one deer ripped the world apart. And then it wasn't long. I could see his, Just a little. his legs. And I told Wade, <laughs> I go, that's him. And I mean, he literally walked right to us. I shot him at four steps. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember that. Uh, that That's one of them hunts you watch. You get chills when you watch it. Yeah. Big deer, two two sixteen, two seventeen, one two seventeen. Yeah, big deer. Yeah, he was. 
Yeah. Here. And you know what? Chances are, there's a good chance that that buck was already bedded down. Yes, and 100%. He heard that. Well, and we were in his bedroom. That's why we hunted there. Like, I couldn't find him. He was on another farm, and I lost him. And then I had a hunch. There was this little bitty patch of brush right off the county road. Honestly, it's within 100 yards of the county road. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, and I surrounded it with cameras. And, I, and this is preceded cells. And I got him. And then I got him, and I got him on all of them coming and going. And I was like, I found his bedroom. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we we went in and killed him. First time we hunted it, we killed him. But we waited for the weather then. Yeah. And it was. I bet he was bedded down. He was bedded down when that buck tore that tree up. You know, in his little sanctuary. No, sure. No. He just yeah, that's take, a no, he, was, no. he was like, I gotta get him out of here. Yeah. So we we called that deer <laughs> dangerous calling. And then Terry killed that deer two years later at age five and a half, and he was in the 170s. Oh, really? Uh, we called him Dangerous Call. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's a cool connection. Yeah, it yeah. is. No, that buck was awesome. And two, uh, your, uh, hell, the the big buck you shot, what would have been, was it last season? When we, I came out the next day and we podcasted over him in the track, the back of the tracker. Fall of 21. 21. Yeah. That was, that was October, like pretty early. Yes, yeah, right? seventh, I think October seventh. So you're close to your birthday there. Yeah, yeah, close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all but there's a difference between the seventh and the thirteenth. Right, they're, they're right. still walking. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden they all stop about the twelfth or so. <laughs> yeah, you need real good weather to kill them in the middle part of October. But if you get it, it's real good. Yeah, yeah, it's real good. But a lot of those hunts, like are like standout hunts in my head from watching them. Well, you know, a lot of them from when I'm a kid, but even then you watch some hunts that like just hit you different. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's normally a buck of that caliber that kind of pulls the inside out with your emotion a little bit when it happens. And there's a reason why you were there under the buildup. Like, you know, as, as a consumer of the content, that's what I love to watch, you know, especially with, with both of you guys, those, those like, just those those hunts that stand out to you. Just not even if you're not there, you're just watching it and consuming it. So, but I don't know. Big bucks are special, man. They just do something to you. Oh, they're special. They <laughs> are. I'll tell you what. Oh, uh, I was talking to Tiffany the other day. That's what makes me think. I'll tell you what, Lee. Lee's a killer, man. Mm -hmm. He is killing giants in the last few years. Yes. Just giant yes lee's as good as he's there is he is he's got <laughs> he's got he's got it going on he's killing them and you would talk about somebody that's he's, driven that's lee lakoski now i mean yeah. he is over the top driven determined gets after it doesn't miss a wink doesn't miss a day doesn't miss a second yeah like lee works as hard as anybody i know at killing deer He's um, really good. And that's what yeah. bumps me out. Like when you see people on the internet, be like, well, if I had that, it's like, <sighs> yeah, well, there's a reason he's got that. <laughs> exactly. Guess yeah, what? He exactly. started with none of that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. His story is pretty transparent. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the thing I just hate, but, but you know, people who know, know, and I, I do Stan, I do appreciate you joining us, man. This has been so fun for me. Um, I've been just, an honor, man. It's a, uh, it's surreal a little bit. <laughs> well, it is. It lot of fun for me too you know i'm glad that mark called me up and asked me you know anytime i get a chance to do anything with guys like you and especially if mark's involved in it i'm i'm all in well stan i want you to think about telling some of your stories on more podcasts and if you want to do that i will drive to you to get these on record because i know a lot of it's videoed but you let me know, brother. I will come to you, and we'll just have a ball, and we'll record our butts off and get these stories out there yeah, in I, podcast format. I, well, yeah, we can do that. I'd love to do it. I'm all in. He's yep. probably within three or four hours here, I would think. Yeah, we're uh, just south of the Quad Cities, Stan. Yeah, well, I go up to the John Deere Classic a lot of years, and it's if you're if you're up in that area, you know, it's about a. It's it's not over three hours. Yeah, you, you yeah. drive you drive right past us for the John Deere Classic. Yep, right past us. Yeah, I, that's a great. Yeah, I go up. I didn't. I didn't go this year because Stricker wasn't playing. But I got a lot of buddies that play on the PGA Tour. Steve and Stricker and Davis Love and 
Sean Stephanie, Chad Collins, Boo Weekly, you know, on and on and on. I got a bunch of them. They're, they're all hunters and they became fans of mine. I met them years ago and I know all them guys. They were a fan, I, I go up fan there. of his golf game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I was at the golf course, our, the, the country club I belong to here. We've got a small club just outside of town. And it's just a nine hole course, but it's a private club. And I was out there with my buddies and we just played. We were in the clubhouse having some lunch and, and, and we're talking about it. You know, we're trying to put together a, an elk deal for next fall. But um, he was calling me and I looked down and I said, looky there. I said, it's Steve Stricker. And, my, of course, my buddies all see his name on my, my phone. They're going, oh, my God. Whoa, what's he calling about? What's he calling about? I said, what do you think he's calling about? He's calling because I'm sure he's trouble with his swing right now, and he wants to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so awesome. <laughs> oh, totally. But I said, yeah, uh, well, what do you got? You getting out ahead of it? You, get, you stand behind the ball? He started laughing. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> I got the, he got a out of that. That's awesome. That is good. Well, Stan, if you go up there next year, you got to hit us up or, you know, I'm serious, man. I, I think the way your passion, the way you tell stories, we need to uh, make this a thing. Yeah. Cause the John Deere classic, we're what? 20, 20, 25 minutes away. Shit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. maybe yeah. Yeah. Maybe about that. Yeah. So, but I'm honest, Stan. If we want to record more, I mean, that, that would be great. We'll do it for the, the DeerCast series there on DeerCast anytime. like we're doing now. Yeah, anytime, guys. It'd be great. Awesome. You're the or, best, brother. Or even better, we'll fly to Arizona when it's freezing cold here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Kurt's buying hey, the tickets, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, come out anytime. <laughs> yeah, I'll play my first game of golf and just embarrass myself in front of you. That'd be fun. <laughs> God Mark bl- and I have played golf. Yeah, we have played golf. I haven't played since then, though, Stan, honestly. I, it's been a long time since I swung a club. Are we going to do a deer cast golf outing? <laughs> well, Terry and I used to both play. Let's do um, it. But we don't anymore. Just too, too dadgum busy. Yeah, I get it. Well, Stan, thank you so much, man. This has been amazing. Mark, thank you for my helping pleasure. line this up, and thank you for being in studio for this. Oh, sh- shit, man. Two of my favorites. Well. You know, Kurt and Stan. Eric, I mean, this is awesome. Yeah. How well, do you how do you have a better Friday than this? That's right. You I know? appreciate you saying that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the truth. Love the fact that Mark called me and asked me, and and love it. Had a great time, and you guys have got it going on. Thank you, Stan. Thanks, Stan. Appreciate you, brother. Thank yeah. you so much, man. We'll be in contact with you. I'm serious. We're going to record some podcasts. So thanks, everyone out there watching and listening and supporting us here on DeerCast. It's the community where you need to be if you're not there. Get on it. We have a promo code in the description of this episode. Take advantage of that. We'll see you next week. You know what to do. Go shoot a giant. We love you. Peace. Peace.